Hey guys, it's Minius. I love the idea of Mass Effect shifting to another galaxy, but the concept of traveling from the Milky Way to Andromeda is kind of ridiculous, even for the Mass Effect universe. Andromeda is 2.5 million light years away, or 23 quintillion, 651 quadrillion, 321 trillion kilometers away. Wow, that's a crazy distance. So how is traveling this distance even possible? I'm going to go over a bunch of ways this might be accomplished, at least in the universe of Mass Effect. But before I get into that, we've been given little bits of information that might relate to the trip. The first few are from last year's Reddit leak. The opening paragraph of that leak says that the entire game takes place in a single cluster of stars, called the Helios Cluster. And in the paragraph about your crew, it says that a Krogan colony ship was captured by an outlaw faction. So there is likely more than one gigantic ship that is making the trip. Now a single cluster of hundreds of star systems is incredibly small when compared to the trillion star Andromeda galaxy. The chance of a bunch of alien races leaving the Milky Way independently and arriving in exactly the same spot is beyond astronomical. A group effort between many of the races of the Milky Way makes sense, because the trip to Andromeda is crazy. You'd want all the help you can get. This could also indicate that anyone making the trip to Andromeda is using the same kind of technology. Perhaps it's something that spits them out in the same location. What else can you tell me? The Reddit leak also says that you'll be establishing colonies. And there really isn't much of a point in founding colonies unless you bring a ton of people with you. The other couple bits come from the N7 Day trailer. In that trailer, Shepard says, And you will look back one last time, which might mean that this is a one-way trip. I like the idea of a one-way trip. I think this would up the drama a bunch. It would mean that you have to establish successful colonies or you'll die out. And you have to forge alliances with the locals or they'll crush you. You're not going to get any backup. Also in the N7 Day trailer, you get a look at a ship on an intergalactic voyage. Notice that this is just one ship, which seems to contradict the convoy idea. Also, this ship is sort of in between what's probably the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies, implying that the vast distance between the two galaxies needs to be physically crossed. But I can't help but notice that the ship in this trailer isn't directly in between the two galaxies. It's actually taking an extremely inefficient route to Andromeda. Now, maybe that means something, but I'm inclined to believe that this shot exists solely as a visual. That would explain why the ship is all alone and wildly off course. But of course, this shot is official, and the Reddit leak is not, so maybe the trailer bit should take precedence. Anyway, keep these little bits of info in mind as I go over a bunch of ways to Andromeda, and you can decide which one seems to fit in best. The races of the Milky Way may seem pretty damned advanced, but their ability to travel is actually quite limited. The galaxy map makes it seem like you can travel to every spot in the Milky Way, but you can't. The ships we know about realistically only have a range of a couple dozen light years, and the Milky Way itself is 100,000 light years across. The mass relays allow ships to jump large distances, but realistically you can only get to a handful of stars grouped around those relays. The codex entries make a point of saying that only 1% of council space in the Milky Way is explored. That's not that much. But if ships can only travel a couple dozen light years, how can they make the 2.5 million light year trip to Andromeda? Well, there shouldn't be any drag in space, so in theory, you could just launch a ship towards a far off target, get up to speed, and then coast all the way there. Of course, where Andromeda is concerned, this trip would still take a ridiculously long time, and something would have to be done to prevent the crew from dying off. Two options that I can see are either a live ship carrying a sizable population that can grow its own food and reproduce for generations until the descendants of its original crew arrive at their destination, or a ship that keeps its crew in stasis, much like the Protheans on Ilos, until their arrival at the specified location. Both of these options seem possible, but also difficult. There's a good chance that you can't coast at light speed. They certainly didn't give you the option to do that in Mass Effect 2 and 3. And if the trip has to be done at sub-light speed, it would take at least 2.5 million years. What? You're crazy! 
and the chance of nothing going wrong technically in 2.5 million years is somewhere very close to impossible. If existing technology doesn't cut it, perhaps the races of the Milky Way can get a boost by integrating Reaper technology. The Reapers were incredibly advanced, especially in the area of space travel. After all, the mass relays, which connect far off parts of space, were built by the Reapers, and it makes plenty of sense to take stuff from those technological marvels. A lot of people have pointed out that the ship in the N7 Day trailer kind of looks like the Citadel, which of course was a humongous mass relay. I think the ship looks a little bit like two mass relays were broken down and combined into one ship, which sounds awesome. There isn't a whole lot known about how the relays actually work, but they do appear to generate an enormous amount of energy. Harnessing this energy could, in theory, increase the speed at which ships travel, which would make covering the great distance to Andromeda far more realistic. Another possibility is repurposing a relay, perhaps even the Citadel, to launch ships at a location where there isn't actually another relay. Because mass relays at least appear to work in tandem, so something would have to be done to them in order for this to work. But if it does work, then ships could be flung tremendous distances. Instantly. Which would have to be very appealing to the races making this trip. Perhaps the easiest and simplest way of making the trip from the Milky Way to Andromeda would be through a wormhole or Einstein-Rosen bridge. All the trip would then take is the discovery of a convenient wormhole, and BAM, you're in Andromeda. No special tech needed. A wormhole could also explain how so many different species end up in virtually the same location. Now there could be some other natural occurrences that would help a trek to Andromeda, but a wormhole seems like the easiest option to me. You're very blunt, Shepard, but you're right. We know that the Mass Effect universe is pretty old. The Reapers were created one billion years ago, and during their reign, countless advanced civilizations were harvested. Now, the Reapers did a pretty damn good job of clearing everything out, but they did miss a few things. The Batarians found a billion-year-old starship in the Hades Gamma Cluster, Cerberus found a 37-million-year-old Reaper corpse, and the gun that killed it. And perhaps somewhere, there is a data cache from one of these unknown civilizations. The sudden appearance of the Reapers had to shatter the prevailing belief that galactic civilization was only 50,000 or so years old. So when that was proven wrong, I'd expect there to be a scramble to find those lost civilizations. Exactly how finding ancient, unknown technology would help the races of the Milky Way travel to Andromeda is tough to say, because the possibilities are near infinite. Perhaps they found technology that can create and manipulate wormholes, which would be damn useful. What about technology that creates a time field, similar to how Ezo creates a Mass Effect field? Perhaps inside this time field, time would slow down to near nothing, allowing a ship to travel for 2.5 million years, but have it feel like nothing to the crew. Another interesting possibility that fits in here is that the Remnant were actually originally from the Milky Way, and wound up in Andromeda because they were trying to escape the Reapers. Then the new citizens of the Milky Way found this technology, and used it to travel to Andromeda in exactly the same way, arriving at the same spot. Give people enough time to technologically progress, and they can create incredible things. Just think of how people from even just 500 years ago would react to our technology. So give the races of the Milky Way 500, 1000, or 2000 years of time after the Reaper invasion, and who knows what they could do. I'm sure that they would come up with things that seem crazy to us, but that's kind of like how the trip to Andromeda seems to me. Uh, the human is lost here. So those are a number of options for making the trip from the Milky Way to Andromeda possible in the Mass Effect universe. Of course, there are so many possibilities for making this trip that I can't all fit them into one video. But if you've got an idea of how this trip might be made, make sure to share it with everybody in the comments section. If you want to see more about how Mass Effect's move to Andromeda works logically, you might want to check out my video titled, How Do We Get From Mass Effect 3 to Mass Effect Andromeda? Probably my favorite part of the Mass Effect universe is how much thought is put into these things, and I really look forward to seeing how this plays out. 
And if you like these theory type videos, check out the channel Mass Effect Odyssey. They've got a number of theories and go way in depth. If you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps out the channel. Keep an eye on Mini SGC for more Mass Effect videos. But for now, I should go. <laughs>